evening, Sumter School District boys and girls, and welcome to a special edition of Reading with the Superintendent. Because this is the month of March, we decided to come and share information with you about women who've paved the way in our world. And so every night when we come to you to read, we'll also have a special guest. And so I can't um, really put into words how elated I am to have our guest tonight join us. So I'm going to yield to my friend and my sister and allow her to introduce herself to you and tell you a little bit about herself. So hi, hi Mrs. Phelps, how are you? Dr. Martin, hello, how are you? I miss you so much. I'm sending you a big hug. And receive it, I'm giving you one right back. Thank you so much. I miss you. I miss you too. I miss you. Too. Thank you. I watch you. I see you with your children on, on social media all over the place and they're so happy. Absolutely. You know what we do? We do for children. You do. We do. Yes, ma'am, we do. Yes, ma'am, we do. And we came together in Baltimore County Public Schools and that's where I am, where I'm all about children first. As a former teacher, uh, principal like you we were principals together we were at the office together for the district working in that capacity i was assistant to the executive director i then was able to open my own schoolhouse so for, for the baltimore county public schools where i felt that i have three children but that schoolhouse gave me a fourth a fourth child just gave me 600 of them which i left with all my heart Absolutely. I'm now the executive director of the Education Foundation. So I have 115,000 children and nearly 10,000 teachers that I put my arms around and hug them if I could every day, but virtually every day to support them with supplies and resources for them to be successful in the classrooms. And I was going to ask you to talk about that. So where'd the idea come from uh, for this initiative to support our, the, the teachers? Well, we have two collaborative resource centers for educators called the Exchangery, Gizmos and Gadgets Galore, because it's all filled with gizmos and gadgets that teachers need in the classroom to deliver instruction, but also supplies, resources, gizmos and gadgets that students need at their desk in order to learn. So the concept came from me being a former educator, knowing I would dig in my pockets to make sure my students had everything they needed even though the district did give me resources and supplies, there's all these little extra things that you wanna do for your students. So the exchangery is able to bring our community on board to donate school supplies, winter accessories, health and wellness resources, as well as something that we're gonna be doing tonight, books for literacy. But you know, our exchangery is some place for teachers to come to talk to each other, mm -hmm. to team build. Mm -hmm. and to be able to build collegiality. Absolutely. So before we begin reading, I just want to thank you because I know how busy you are. Um, and when we began to talk about Women's History Month, I sat back with the team and I said, you know, I need to find me some women who I believe are remarkable. And so you fit that category. So I just, um, when I reached out and I called you, absolutely, yes, ma'am. When I reached out and called you and you said, yes, I was so elated uh, that you accepted the invitation to read. Because as we read this evening, she persisted, 13 American women who changed the world. I think the work that you do as an educator and as a leader is one of those components that could fit right into this work about changing the world. So. Thank you for taking the, your time out of your day uh, to read to the wonderful children here in Sumter and across the nation um, in, as we celebrate um, Women's History Month. Well, thank you for the invitation. And when I saw your name up on my phone, I was like grabbing to get it answered. <laughs> so it's nice to know I'm still programmed in your phone. You are. Always, <laughs> Dr. Martin. Always. So, so Mrs. Phelps, we're going to read... Um, this book that we spoke about, spoke about, written by Chelsea Clinton and illustrated by Alexandra Boyer. And so I'm excited to read with you as we talk about the women who've changed the world. So before we begin, I need to make sure everyone is focused. And so I usually do a call and response and it says, one, two, three, all eyes on me. One, two, three, all eyes on you? 
<laughs> they can stay on me. Yes, ma'am. Yes. All right. All right. So why don't you go ahead and take the first few pages? Absolutely. And you're going to show these beautiful illustrations of these wonderful students and children in these books that become leaders of today. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, let's begin, Dr. Martin. Sometimes being a girl isn't easy. At some point, someone probably is, will tell you to, will tell you to be quiet will tell you no, and may even tell you that your dreams are impossible. But you know what? Don't listen. Don't listen to them. Because these 13 American women that we are gonna talk about this evening certainly did not take no for an answer from anyone at all. They persisted. That, that's pretty powerful, looking at the women. I actually just spoke this morning uh, and participated on a panel um, with uh, some magnificent women from Ashar Air Force Base. And so that's another story, but maybe I can get them to come in and read with us as well. Um, I actually had the opportunity to have Lieutenant Colonel Sullivan to read with us uh, for Women's History Month. And so we just need to continue to support one another, just as indicated in in this, in these photographs. But Dr. Martin, can what do you what do you think of when they say they persisted? It means persisted. the number of times you've been told no or told you can't do something, they continued to persevere and to push forward and never settled for what someone else believed they could or could not do. Do they talk back? I, I don't think they talk back. I think they listen and prove to individuals by their actions. I agree with you. All right, shall we continue? Yes, ma'am. Would you like to read about this next wonderful woman by the name of Harriet Tubman? I would, I would, if that's okay. All right. Okay. So Harriet Tubman was born a slave and her story could have ended there. Instead, here it is, Mrs. Phelps, that, that, that phrase, she persisted escaping from slavery and becoming the most famous conductor on the Underground Railroad. She risked her life many times to lead countless slaves to freedom, including her family, friends, and strangers. Every person she led to freedom arrived safely. Now, there's a quote that is listed in, in this story. I should fight for my liberty as long as my strength lasted. What does that quote mean to you, Mrs. Phelps? Wow. I shall fight for my liberty as long as my strength lasted. As long as I can keep on moving forward, as long as I can see, keep on having that drive, I am going to stand up for my freedom as a woman, Absolutely. as a, a citizen of the United States. Absolutely. And do what I think is right. Absolutely. Look how dark it was, Dr. Martin. It, it is very dark. It is very dark. And you see her holding the lantern to provide light. And the children look so young. They do. They look young. They do. But she persisted. persisted. Yes, ma'am. Here's another very interesting lady. Oh, she is. Absolutely. She is. Her name is Helen Keller. Once Helen Keller became blind and deaf as a toddler, few people thought she would ever be able to learn, to read, to write, or to speak. I can't imagine that. They didn't think she would write, read, speak, be able to learn, but she persisted, Dr. Martin. She persisted. And Helen learned how to do all three and not only became the first person with deaf blindness to graduate from a college, but she used her story to help fight for more opportunities for people, for them to watch her because of her disabilities, not only in the United States, but all around the world. So they didn't think she would learn to read, to write or to speak, but she made sure that even with her disabilities, people were able to see 
that anything is possible. Mm -hmm. And the quote that she has, Dr. Martin says, one can never consent to creep when, when one feels an impulse to soar. I love that. I'm yeah, not going to creep. Nice. That's, that's, the first soar. that's the first time I've heard that quote. And myself as well. I think it's, it's very powerful. Feeling the impulse to soar. So Not to, what do you think that means? Feeling the impulse to soar. To let go, like a bird I think of. Mm -hmm. Not to take baby steps. Don't creep. Mm -hmm. I can soar high if I am persistent. Yes, ma'am. If I believe in myself. Absolutely. And I think that's the most important part. Believing Absolutely. Yourself. Yes, ma'am. So are we ready to talk about this other young lady she had a voice yes so after her family fled poverty and the threat of violence in ukraine for a new home in new york city clara lemlich got a job working at a garment factory she wrote that the factory's conditions made women into machines and so she persisted Organizing picket lines and strikes that ultimately help win better pay, shorter hours, and safer work conditions for thousands of workers, both women and men. And so she actually exercised her voice peacefully. And one of the quotes that's listed as we talk about Ms. Lemlich, I am one of those who suffers from the abuses described here. And I move that we go on a general strike. And so when you talk about the conditions that she worked in, she, along with others, but leading the charge, she actually had to stand up for her rights and the rights of others, both women and men. A strong voice. Yes, ma'am. So you had to be able to communicate. Absolutely. Effectively. Mm -hmm. And clearly. Clearly. So you're believing in yourself, you're communicating with clarity and using your voice. She was not only standing up for women, she was standing up for men Absolutely. for what she thought was right. Yes, she did. Look at, look, look at her hat. It's nice. She's all dressed up, isn't she? She, she reminds me of you the way she's dressed. All dressed up, always. I forgot my hat tonight. <laughs> always dressed nicely. So I take after you. But is this appearance important then? It is. It is very much so. But I don't have to have a hat on. Yeah. And so it's, I think it's like 67 degrees here today, maybe. So I, I don't know if we can walk around with hats. <laughs> Leave that for later on. <laughs> All right. This is another very interesting lady. Yeah. Her name is Nellie Bly. I'll tell you a story about Nellie later. Nellie. Nellie Bly became a reporter in part because, because a male writer had said that working women were a monstrosity. Who would call anyone a monstrosity? But he also said, but she, but she said, with that comment, I want to prove that women can do anything. I love it, anything. At times, putting her safety at risk, she persisted throughout her career in exposing real monstrosities, pretending to, to be a sweatshop worker. And she pretended to be a patient in a mental hospital to show how badly people were being treated. Wow. And her quote, Dr. Martin says, I have never written a word that did not come from my heart. And I never shall. Right. And so when I hear that quote, that means that whenever you present yourself, you should always be your authentic self, but it should always come from your heart. Do what is right. You know, absolutely. But you know, when I hear you say that, I always wanted to make sure that my students were also in their heart, bringing their family members with them. 
mm-hmm. that they were representing themselves and their families mm-hmm. and the schools in which they attend. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a pretty big responsibility. It is a lot of responsibility. But, but you know about responsibility because you led a school, you opened a school, you, you taught in schools, and you continue to serve our schools and making sure our teachers are taken care of. So that is a huge responsibility. It's believing. I agree. It's believing. I agree. I agree. I think, I think, I think this one is also a one that's powerful. So you want to talk about Virginia Apgar? She has a very big heart too. She a heart does. filled with love. She does. Am I going to be sharing here? Yes, ma'am, please. Okay. So Virginia Apgard, she was inspired from an early age by her brother's childhood illness. Virginia Apgard was determined to be a doctor long before many girls had such dreams. Even though she was qualified to be a surgeon, the male head surgeon at the hospital discouraged her because she was a woman. Don't like that. But nonetheless, Virginia Apgard, she persisted becoming an anesthesiologist and creating the Apgar score to test a newborn baby's health, which hospitals all over the world still use today. Wow. Wow. That's huge. That's a huge accomplishment. Listen to what she said. Nobody but nobody is going to stop breathing on me. Yeah. Yeah. Continuing to instill life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Have you ever wanted to be a prima, a prima ballerina? Um, I think I have two left feet. But I know you dance. But I, I, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I think that goes back to my days in college and marching band. So I can do a little something, something, but ballerina style, no ma'am. Okay, let's go for it. Okay. So after Maria Tallchief's family moved to California, partly to support Maria's dream of becoming a dancer. She was teased by students in school for her Native American heritage and later was encouraged to change her last name to something that sounded Russian, since many professional dancers at the time were from Russia. She persisted, ignoring all the taunting and poor advice to become the first great American prima ballerina. Wow. Was she bullied? That's what it sounds like. When you tease and you taunt someone uh, for their differences or to gain power. Yes, yes, that's what it sounded like. But look at her. Beautiful, beautiful. And her quote states, it never occurred to me to say it hurts to do that. So she said it never occurred to her to pretty much tell people to stop. She didn't like it and it hurt her. And so I think that when we are dealing with situations of bullying, as it is still prominent today, we need to make sure we tell individuals that hurts and please don't do it. And for those who do it, I always live by the quote, never treat anyone the way you don't want to be treated. I'm loving that. I agree with you. And and bullying hurts. It does. It does. does. And if a student doesn't feel like their voice right then can be shared with someone who's hurting them, I would suggest they go to somebody else first, go to a teacher Mm -hmm. or their principal or their mom or dad, let them know how they feel inside. Mm -hmm. Not, not to carry that, 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 that feeling with you. Absolutely. That's hard with Dr. Martin. It, It is. It is. It's hard as a child but it also hurts and and is hard as an adult um, because it doesn't stop unless we address it. Those behaviors are instilled and as you get older, they still are there, especially the hurt for those who are the victims. So we have to continue to work together and to support one another. And I think one of the efforts that is led around the nation and one that we led together is to be kind. Absolutely, absolutely. But 
she has she has a passion to do what she loves. Mm-hmm. So our children need to be persistent. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so when you talked about baggage, I think it leads very nicely into the next person we're going to talk about, Claudette Colvin. I wonder what she did. She used her voice. She did. And she persisted. She did. And she, she helped. She sure did. Oh. Let's take a look at her. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. As a 15-year-old riding a bus home from school in Montgomery, Alabama, Claudia Calvin was expected to give up her seat to a white woman because she was African-American. In her refusal to get up, she persisted in taking a stand for what's right helping to inspire Rosa Parks to make the same choice nine months later and act many point to a starting of the civil rights movement. Wow, Dr. Martin. Well, you know, I think this is a teachable moment because while we admire what Rosa Parks did, Claudette Colvin is not one who's really talked about that often but she was the first, particularly as a young woman. And so at the age of 15, uh, she stood up for what was right or what should have been right. That, that's, that's our ninth and 10th graders in our school districts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Standing up. But standing up with poison dignity, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. Not confrontational because no. oftentimes no. when you scream no. and you're combative, no right. one will listen to you, nor will they take you seriously. Very true. Very true. So we have to remember that. So her quote says, I never knew then, and I know now that when it comes to justice, there is no easy way to get to it. You can't sugarcoat it. You have to take a stand and say, this is not right. Yes, ma'am. You know what? Those last four words, can you repeat them again? This is not right. And I feel somewhere along the line, and I know I'm right, I can remember an exchange you had with a student, and you were trying to use it as a teachable moment, and you said, this is not right. You, you didn't yell. You weren't confrontational. You never have been. And so I think your point was well received by not just that incident, but all of the students that you served. But Dr. Martin, I always, I always said to end that statement is to be the stronger person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, if, if you get the last word, you just need to be the stronger person sometimes. Sometimes it's hard to say I'm wrong or I'm sorry, but let's talk about our heart again. Mm -hmm. what's in your right what's excuse me what's in your heart make sure that we are demonstrating that yes ma'am yes ma'am and so the, oh ruby bridges yes ma'am and so i think they may know about ruby bridges but just let's just read about her and find out so when ruby bridges was in kindergarten Many schools across America, particularly in the South, still refused African-American students their equal right to an education. Ruby wouldn't be treated like a second-class student, and she persisted. Walking for weeks past angry, hateful protesters to integrate an all-white elementary school in New Orleans. Now, we've talked about Ms. Colvin at 15. We talked about, you know, some other women who, but in kindergarten to have that type of willpower and determination and persistence. And believing in herself. Absolutely. Absolutely, she did. And so the quote that is referenced here that fateful walk to school began a journey and we all must 
work together to continue moving forward. If that were the quote for Ruby Bridges then, it is still relevant today. In order for us to work together, we must continue to move forward. So these days should not impact the children that we serve and service. And so I, this is just remarkable every time I hear the story of Ruby Bridges. I, I'm gonna go back again to being a kindergartner <laughs> and having that voice and that poise okay. and that belief in themselves is what she knew what was right. Mm -hmm. And the determination. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Determination. Absolutely. Where do, where do you get determination from? Well, what, what do you think? I think I think it can be learned. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it is also taught, but mm -hmm. I think it's something that's innate um, that you have to believe in yourself, right? You can be taught to be determined, but I'm not sure if you can execute unless you truly believe it. Does that make sense? That does make sense. Yeah. And, you know, we're all going to have, I know what we call an iPhone, a speed bumps in your life, mm -hmm. kind of where you have made a wrong choice or a wrong decision. Mm -hmm. To have the determination that I always say you can flip that coin over and make things better mm -hmm. by asking questions, by having people around you that support you and love you and that can help you understand and keep that determination going forward. Yes, ma'am. And so you used the uh, speed bump analogy, and I usually use the detour phrase because detours are only temporary. Absolutely. They may be there. You can always go around, over, or under just to get to the other side, but exercising caution as you do so. They're learning opportunities. Yes, ma'am. I've had many. Mm -hmm. Dr. Martin? Well, I've, I, I, you know I've had many. <laughs> Absolutely. Those are the things that make you stronger and encourage you and force you to be even more persistent. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Margaret Chase Smith as the first woman to serve as both a United States representative and a United States Senator, Margaret Chase Smith could have let that fact alone be her legacy, but instead she persisted in champions women's rights and more opportunities for women in the military, standing up for free speech and supporting space exploration. The head of NASA once noted that we wouldn't have put a man on the moon if it was not for Margaret Chase Smith. Look at her in her red dress, Dr. Martin. Absolutely. Now, now I have to say something about the red dress. When you asked a few moments ago, where do we get things from? My grandma taught me not to wear red dresses in public, in in forums and that's another conversation that that's that's another conversation i'm glad i didn't wear red this evening <laughs> but that's one of my best colors yeah yeah i, I have little little red in my repertoire but mm -hmm. so they're crediting her for the man on the moon absolutely that's powerful mm -hmm. So she says, Dr. Martin, the right way is not always the popular and easy way. We get again. The right way is not always the most popular and easy way. Standing for right when it is unpopular is a true test of moral character. Mm -hmm. It's pretty heavy. No, it is. That is that is truly heavy. Because a lot of times things are done or decisions are made for the popularity of the decision. But it always has to be what's right, not what may be popular, but what's right. You know, when I hear you say that, I think of like when you're voting for city government president or you're uh, voting for an office in another club. 
is it a popularity contest or it's the person who would make it right or do the best? Sometimes mm -hmm. that becomes very difficult. It does. It does. It does. Because uh, you want to kind of side with those, but no, do what's right. morally right. Absolutely. The true test of moral character. Wow. Look at all these men sitting around her. I, I see. I, I see. Yes, ma'am. And yeah. they're applauding her. Leading wow. the charge. Yes, ma'am. Wow. So, so our next female, Sally Ride. Mm. You hear the name Sally Ride. But did we really know who Sally is? Let's find out. Let, yeah, yes, ma'am. Let's find out. Sally Ride always believed women could succeed in any math or science career. Although not everyone agreed, she persisted. And she became the first American woman in space. I'll say that again. She wow. became the first American woman in space. But that wasn't enough for Sally. She traveled into space once more and then created science and engineering programs specifically for girls, so she could help generations of young women achieve their dreams, too, both on Earth and in outer space. And so I think her name is very fitting. So she did take a ride. She did. Space. She did. A long ride. A, a very long ride. And so that is admirable. Um, but again, it demonstrates her determination and for her to chase and pursue her dreams. Her quote, mm. and I may get this one to put on my wall. Young girls need to see role models in whatever careers they may choose, just so they can picture themselves doing those jobs someday. You can't be what you can't see. You can't be what you can't see. Yes, ma'am. And so I think the first portion of this quote, young girls need to see role models. I am a firm believer that empowered women empower women. Empowered young ladies empower young ladies. And so we need to make sure that we continue to be and serve in those um, eyes of our young girls as positive and influential and making sure they can establish themselves and set expectations and, and, and make sure they meet those goals. Regardless. So you mean I can be an engineer? Oh, absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You can be an engineer. And a mathematician? Yes, ma'am. I believe because you know, they go together. You know, when I was a teacher, I taught food scientists. So I was a food scientist. I remember. I remember. Yes, ma'am. So that was pretty cool. And you know, when I was a teacher, I was a reading teacher and I was a band director or music educator. And I was a scientist too. When we began to talk about the anatomy and how you produce air and how you fill up your instrument, that's another conversation. But that's science. It's science. Yes, ma'am, it did. Yes. So wow. I have the next person, and her story is just as remarkable. Um, I wouldn't want her to chase me anywhere. Nor would I. And her name is Florence Griffin Joyner. So when, as a kid, Florence Griffin Joyner visited her father in the Mojave Desert. He would urge her to run faster and faster and faster, to run as fast as he says, run as fast as a jackrabbit, Florence. Even when she had to leave for college to help support her family, excuse me, even when she had to leave college to help support her family, she persisted in her training on the track, then went back to school and got faster and faster and faster yet. So she was in college, she left college to support her family, then she went back, but her unbroken world records in the 100 meter and 200 meter sprint set at the 1988 Summer Olympics means she is still 
the fastest woman ever. Wow, she was a 1988 Olympian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at her carrying that flag with such pride. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I think I can run in the next Olympics with the flag. What do you, what do you? Okay, okay, Dr. Martin, I'm right behind you. Maybe you could, maybe you could be the flag bearer, bearer, but I don't know if you could, or maybe you could win a 100, 100 meter dash. I bet you could. I have all the confidence in the world in you, if you train. So, so let me ask you a question. And you can tell me no. Have you ever been to the Olympics? Yes. <laughs> you Like five of them. You carry the flag? Um, I didn't carry the flag, but I carried my son in my heart as he competed. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's, that's, that's beautiful. So, yes, the Olympics is an amazing time for the world to come together as one and to celebrate globalization, mm -hmm. but also to be able to celebrate your country. Mm -hmm. So as the proud mother of Michael Phelps and Hillary and Whitney Phelps, Michael was a five-time Olympian. And is known, Miss Martin, Dr. Martin, as a goat. Yes. A goat. Yes. I thought he would be known as a businessman, which he is. But he's known as the greatest of all times for all of the medals, a total of 28 that he was able to practice really hard. Let me just say this. Let me just say this. As we're talking about the women who have come before us, I think you need to be commended for being that strong, supportive mom you are to your three kids. I do. Being and Mike was the baby. Huh? Mike was the favorite son. Uh oh. Uh, well, the, I didn't. The only I, son. I, I was going to say I didn't say that <laughs> no, to Hillary. I, I just. I... <laughs> but Dr. Martin, may I say that I'm proud to be their mamas, but I'm also proud of my two daughters who really opened that doorway for Michael because they also swam. And we feel with their determination and what they exemplified as young women in, in the sport, that he was able to embrace that and watch that every day. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. But hats off to you. And so hats off to this woman, Oprah Winfrey. Ah. And so I don't know if people realize that Oprah Winfrey was in Baltimore for a very long time. She was a news reporter here. She was. When I was in school, she was a news reporter. But Oprah Winfrey's grandmother expected Oprah to follow in her footsteps and become a maid. Oprah knew, even as a little girl, that her dreams would take her somewhere else. She persisted, Mrs. Phelps, in turning those dreams into her reality and became a media superstar, working in movies, books, magazines, theater, and most of all, television, where the Oprah Winfrey Show remains the highest rated talk show of all times. Now, I didn't know that part, so that's something that I've learned. But the quote associated with Miss Winfrey is the biggest adventure you can ever take is to live the life of your dreams. Wow. 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 She is very philanthropic as well. Uh, absolutely. And she has a heart. Yeah. And it's always good to give back. Absolutely. And I always say that the only time you should look down on someone is when you're giving them your hand to lift them up. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, it's not only receiving something that's tangible you can see. I don't always mean that by giving. I mean by giving from, I, I'm going back to your heart, Dr. Martin, what's in your heart and what you believe is what's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know through our relationship as professionals and women leaders in our district, we've always given that, that heartfelt conversation to each other. Absolutely. It's to doing what's right, getting another idea and being collaborative. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And so this next one, Sonia Sotomayor. Hmm. Justice. I wonder, I wonder if our children know about her. Well, let me share a little bit about who she is. 
Watching fictional judges on TV inspired Sonia Sotomayor to want to be a real life judge when she grew up. She knew she had to speak English as well as she spoke Spanish. So she's bilingual. She knew she had to study hard in school and manage her diabetes before she could one day wear a judge's robe with a gavel in hand. Dr. Martin, she persisted. She persisted to where she eventually became a Supreme Court justice and the first ever Latino to sit on America's highest court. Wow. She had to learn English. Mm -hmm. She had to study hard. Mm -hmm. She had to manage her diabetes. Mm -hmm. She had a dream and a passion of what she wanted to do. Absolutely. I love seeing pictures of her. She's so stately and strong. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But she still has that gentle smile on her face of kindness. So you can imagine what's in her heart. Absolutely. Absolutely. And she has presence. She does. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So her quote says, I've never had to face anything that could overwhelm the nature of op- the, the nature, the native optimistic, the native op- op- optimism, sorry, and stubborn perseverance I was blessed with. So I have never had to face anything that could overwhelm the native optimism and stubborn perseverance I was blessed with. Those are big steps she's walking up. They are, but she climbed them. Big shoes to fill. Yes, ma'am. But she did it. She did it. She definitely did. And quite well. Absolutely. And still doing it. Yes. She's a role model. So, Mrs. Stubbs, I think that this final page just sums it up so nicely. So if anyone ever tells you no, if anyone ever says your voice isn't important or your dreams are too big, remember these women, they persisted and so should you. You know, this is a favorite of mine. And I think I first read it a few years ago. And so when you said, can we read this one? Absolutely, we will make sure we have our copy. And so thank you for picking this book. Thank you for being with me. I miss you, I appreciate you, I respect you, and you are a woman who has persisted. And thank you for all that you do. Love you. Love you too. Thank I'll see you soon. Yes, ma'am, you will. Thank you. Please tell all your babies. I I absolutely will. will. And that they can do it. All our viewers, have a great evening and thank you for joining us and continue to persist. Thank you. Just look back to the